All right, so I finished Shantae Half Genie Hero about a half an hour ago, so here are my initial thoughts on it. This game actually has the honor of being the first thing in the world to credit Son Neokaku. <laughs> That's right, I crowd helped crowdfund this. Actually, the first game I ever crowdfunded, but whatever. Uh, before, as per usual, my thoughts on the previous games. Shantae 1 for Game Boy. Pretty good for its time, it has definitely aged, and I think it's probably the worst in the series. Shantae Risk is Revenge, easily the best DSiWare game there is. <laughs> Maybe not that say much, but it's a really good game, and I think it still holds up. And the one we got last year, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, really good actually, I liked it. And now, Shantae Half Genie Hero. It's good, without a doubt, but I'm still not sure if it's for the series subpar or <laughs> or not. Maybe I'm just spoiled because the past two games were just so damn good. In case you never heard of it, Shantae is a platforming game about the Tyler hero who is a half genie somehow. She's been selected as a guardian genie of sorts for a town named Skull Town, I think. And the series is about her trying to defend it, the whole world from the pirate Risky Boots. And of course this game is no different. Sounds simple enough, but what I think gives the whole series such a unique charm is it's, as, as the game itself puts it, flirtatious humor. Like, for one thing, Shantae used belly dancing. <laughs> and all the girls are very lightly dressed. I know this it's probably supposed to be hot there, but still. And there's a lot of fourth wall breaking moments and a lot of really silly humor. And like I said, I crowdfunded this game, but I'm still not sure why they went with that route. But Though I still haven't received all the stuff that was promised, but... It's another discussion for another day, I guess. So let's start with the negatives. My first and foremost complaint is probably that there's a bit too many transformations. I can't remember the exact number right off the bat, but I think Shantae 1 had, not counting the bonus tinker bat, probably four transformations. And I think Risky's Revenge had three, possibly four. Like I said, I can't remember the exact amount. Half Genie Hero has eight, and also four types of magic, which is also accessed via the dance feature. And I think a few of them just seem redundant somehow. I won't get into spoilers, by the way, so I won't give you the full details, but there's one transformation in which you just hover. And that's it, you can just go forward forever. And another transformation which lets you freaking fly. And that's not to say the one where you hover is completely useless or anything, it just feels a bit too much. It's like, why did the game even be designed around that thing? Why not just sell it with the one that flies? And there's also two transformations for water travel. It's like, we really need that many? Why not just one, like in <laughs> Risk is Revenge? Hell, the previous game didn't even have any, it just relied on tools. That worked too. So in this game you transform by pressing X, I think it is. And then you press up, down or left, right on the D-pad or the control stick. But since there are so many, it browses through them. It's like, first there's a menu of the first transformation, then after, let's say, three seconds it switches to the next, in which, let's say, left transforms you to a monkey on the first menu, then it switches, and then left transforms you into something else. So every time you need a specific transformation, you have to wait. But if you know that the transformation is, say, on down, but it's on the second menu, you just might out of reflex just press the transformation button and down and be like, God damn it, <laughs> wrong transformation. That's probably just me though, I admit. But apart from that, I think the controls are pretty good. Maybe Shantae moves a bit too slow, but we have a transformation which lets you travel a bit faster. And the thing I think it improves the most upon, which then again was done in 
the pirate's curse, but at least this one also did right, is that there's no overworld, so to say. Like it's like in Super Mario World, you'd like travel in between stages instead of having to manually walk there like Castlevania or Metrovania style. Which I think works a lot better for this game. And keep in mind it is fairly short. I think you should manage to beat it within nine or ten hours or so, but that's I think that's what these games are supposed to be, just a fun little experience and you might come back to it. There's not that much replay value in it, but I don't consider that <laughs> too big of a deal. Also, another negative, I think a few, should we say, action sequences go on a bit too long, especially in the beginning, because you only start with two damn hearts for some reason, like, why not three or something? Especially since most of the enemies in the beginning takes away half your heart. Four hits? Really? Okay. But fortunately, it's not too hard, it's pretty fair. And unlike in the previous games, in this one, whenever you like go to a different screen, the game asks you, do you want to save? The problem with that is though that there are... Those are actually your checkpoints. Like if you die and you choose to retry, it actually just loads your data again from your last checkpoint. It's not like it sends you back to the beginning of the room in where you died or something. Fortunately, there's some effects, like I think there's a laser somewhere. If you get zapped by it, you go back to the beginning of the room instead of triggering a formal game over or something, which is good. And the humor is still there, as per always. If you are played any Shantae games before, you know exactly what to expect, and it doesn't fail to deliver. The problem is, though, that I think it seems maybe a bit rushed in some areas like i think the story foremost is actually pretty weak but it doesn't suck it's just that my foremost complaint is actually the risky boots is barely in it and she's the villain i'm not gonna say that she should have had a big of a role as she did in the pirate's curse but at least in Risk is your Revenge, you had the audacity to show up every once in a while and just be like, Hey, I exist. Goodbye. In here, I think she's, like I said, no major details here. No spoilers. She's pretty much in the beginning for a bit and towards the end. That's it. And somehow she's supposed to be the main antagonist. I guess that's minor detail because this game... In the end, is still very fun to play, and I recommend it. Though I think the Pirate's Curse and the and Risky's Revenge might be a bit better. I don't think there's that much else to say about it. I can't think of anything right now. So thank you for watching, and if you have a suggestion on what I should talk about next time, tell me in the comments.